All right. Well, how are y'all doing? Doing good? Yeah. Still awake a little bit? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Phil, for that wonderful, detailed introduction. I really, really appreciate it, all the way from the country of South Carolina. Uh, thanks, Phil. Thanks, Doug. Thanks, Karen, and the rest of the team for a great conference so far. Looking forward to the last few talks as well, including yours, Doug. And uh, as Phil mentioned, my name is Josh Brower. Um, I have deployed Security Onion in production for many years now, and I joined Security Onion Solutions about four and a half years ago, focused on the continued engineering of the platform, as well as training. Uh, Matt Gracie and myself recently released the uh, Security Onion Essentials out on YouTube. You can catch it now. That is the newly revised uh, free training for Security Onion 2.4 that was just published, I think, Monday. So thanks again, Matt, for helping me out with that. I think it turned out very well. So we are, oh, I should say, I'm sorry, on uh, Twitter slash X, you can find me, whatever it's called now, I tweet or whatever it is, uh, at Defense of Depth. It's the only social media I'm on. Feel free to reach out. So we're going to talk about defensive intel with Security Onion, and the first question we have to answer is what in the world is defensive intel? Well, we know what threat intel is, right? It's those IPs and MD5s that you get sent every month for an arm and a leg. No, hopefully we get more than just MD5s, right? So threat intel is simply the idea of uh, getting uh, indicators as well as context around those indicators for threat actors, okay? And defensive intel is the same concept, but applied to the defensive side of things. Think of it this way, what is one of the very first things that red teamers as well as threat actors do when targeting you? And I am asking real questions, so feel free to answer. What is one of the first things they do when looking to target you as an organization? OSINT, who said that? All right, I'm gonna throw this at you, you ready? I don't wanna knock over anything, I'll try again. Okay, that wasn't too bad. That was all your skill, that was not on me, that was all on you. All right, you're right, so some type of OSINT like recon and discovery, and as part of that recon and discovery phase, they do a lot of different things like subdomain enumeration, DNS history, organizational IP space, might even do a little bit of you know active scanning on the organizational IP space. Uh, using the certificate uh, transparency logs, we can pull all the certs issued for a particular domain and organization. May use Shodan for keyword searches, uh, cloud resources, I'm thinking primarily like storage buckets and other applications hosted in the cloud, more from an infrastructure side of things, social media and code repos. So all of this information they gather um, in bits and pieces to bring together, a, uh, excuse me, to bring together a picture of your organization so that they can eventually find those weaknesses, those soft spots that they can target and eventually exploit. So defensive intel is simply the idea of taking all of this information that's gathered on us from the other side and using it for our own benefit, okay? Making it, bringing it into a platform like Security Onion, monitor it and alert on it, and proactively be able to find those soft spots um, so that we can fix them as needed. Now you may say, Josh, you're really just talking about attack surface management or continuous vulnerability assessment or in physical security situational awareness or something like that, that's all you're really talking about, and I would say, yeah, I think you could make um, an argument that we're talking about attack surface, but I feel like a lot of times when we talk about continuous vulnerability assessment, a lot of people get this idea of I'm just going to, you know, nightly scan my organizational IP space for vulnerabilities, get a score, you know, fix them as they come up, and that's really, that's really it. I'm trying to broaden the perspective a little bit more that we're really talking about you know, all the data and context that's gathered on us from the red team and adversary side, I'm really talking about that very broad perspective. Is that making sense? Okay, thank you. Who said that? Thank you, Scott, I appreciate that. All right, 
So with that in mind, I spent, um, well, I've done this kind of, in the organizations I've been involved with in the past, I've always done things like this, um, where I've used different paid and uh, open source projects to do some sort of general monitoring for the organization. And I've always wanted to make it more inherent to Security Onion. Like I mentioned, I've used Security Onion in production for organizations for many years, and I've always wanted to bring that kind of visibility more into the platform itself because Security Onion isn't just you know, network visibility. Security Onion isn't just endpoint visibility. Security Onion isn't just email visibility. Security Onion is a visibility platform, right? Wherever we need the visibility, let's bring that into Security Onion. Let's monitor it, let's alert on it, let's slice and dice that data so that we can make our organizations more safe. Again, is that making sense? Yes, okay, so what I did is I spent some time and put together a set of scripts that focuses on four key areas based on the whole idea of defensive intel. And here's what we started out with. Organizational IP space, how many of you, well, I guess you don't have to raise your hands, but in this era of the shrinking perimeter with BYOD and all of that, we still have uh, some sort of organizational perimeter, right? Like we still have colo facilities, we still have infrastructure in the cloud. So generally speaking, do y'all still have services that have public IPs where you are hosting things? Generally speaking, I'm seeing some, yes. Excuse me. And so I think the first key area to monitor is organizational IP space, your public IP space. And very simply, we're just using Nmap in my script to regularly scan that, to convert the results to JSON, and then uh, import that into Security Onion. And all of the areas that I'm gonna talk about uh, all have personal stories <laughs> from my time, from past lives of where I found and uncovered issues with our organization. Um, with this one, I, I can't get into all of them, but this one in particular, I was a primary firewall admin uh, for, this, uh, for this group, and I was on vacation, and the, the secondary firewall admin needed to make a change. So this person uh, ran into some problems, called support for the hardware vendor for the firewall. Somehow, <laughs> not sure exactly what happened, somehow, the default rule got flipped. So instead of default deny, it was default allow, okay? And at that point, we had a ton of services that we were hosting uh, on-prem. And the only way that we were alerted that something was misconfigured was our regular Nmap scan, scan of our organizational IP space. Of all of a sudden, there's a lot more services publicly available than should be, right? And so we're able to quickly figure that out. There's nothing malicious. The, uh, the person involved, it was, completely misconfiguration, but those are the types of stories that make me think, yeah, I need to make sure that we're monitoring this on a regular basis. Secondly is certificate transparency. So a few years ago, uh, the mainstream certificate authorities started publishing logs of all of these certificates that they issue. That is called the CT, the Certificate Transparency Log. And this is freely available and you can query it and it gives you lots of really interesting data like subdomains for a particular domain, gives you an idea of maybe what kind of shadow IT is happening in your organization. Also, if you have an abandoned subdomain and someone else picks that up and starts maybe misusing it, generates a cert for it, a lot of really interesting data can be brought in just from the CT logs. And so I'm gonna query that as well using SSL Mate's Cert Spotter API. Now, Cert Spotter is a open source project put out by SSL Mate. This is their hosted version of it, and it's free for limited use, and for our use here, it works just fine. Third is cloud resources, and I'm primarily thinking of open buckets. Has anybody here personally or know of someone that has had like an open bucket with you know sensitive data on it? Anybody? Yes, at least I'm seeing a good quarter. So again, I won't ask you to raise your hands, but how many of you are scanning on a regular basis for open buckets associated with your organization? Many of us are not, some of us are. Um, my goal is to be able to do that quickly and efficiently inside of Security Onion and bring those results into SO. I'm using a, um, a free and open source um, 
Python script called Cloud Hunter, and I do have their GitHub page up here. Excuse me. Finally, we have Shodan. Last year in my security onion talk, I, uh, I talked quite a bit about Shodan and the different things we can pull, so I'm not going to deep dive into it. But again, personal stories have lots of uh, situations that we have um, diffused using Shodan. There was one particular one where there was a third party contractor doing some development for us that had some customer data and we found that on Shodan through doing keyword searches for our organization. And again, that's all freely available um, from Shodan or they have an API key for very, very cheap. So I went ahead and spent some time putting together some scripts about how to uh, you know, pull this data in and display it in Security Onion. And obviously we're gonna run into some challenges all right, any ideas on what may be some challenges when we try to do this? Different data formats? Different data formats? Who said that? You can make me throw. I'm almost. Good thing it's not like a hard piece of candy or something, right? All right, yeah, so different data formats. So you have to have like individual parsers for each data source. Yes. I'm sorry? Timestamps, yes, yes, timestamps, and uh, differing timestamps, right, having to convert those. What about um, the, more generally the idea that you don't know what to monitor because you don't know what you have, right? So a lot of this stuff, um, how do I know that um, I've got buckets out there that I should monitor because they're so easily creatable? I literally went on to AWS under my personal Amazon account yesterday and within, I think it was 60 seconds, I created a bucket with completely open permissions and dropped some data in it. I mean, it's just very simple and easy to do. And we don't know unless we're out there looking for it. And the problem is that if we try to be a bit more broad in our searching, like do some brute force you know, you know, naming and try to think through you know, how to find that, we can generate a lot of data. So we can try to find all the things but then we have to sift through all the things, right? There's a lot of false positives that we have to work through. And so part of the challenge is finding that balance between um, th throwing a wide, broad net and then also missing some things. So that's something to keep in mind that is configurable. Secondly is how do we visualize the data, all right? And I really think there's two different ways to visualize the data, either snapshot or differential. Snapshot would be simply the idea of um, maybe daily, I generate a report um, and I see you know, a snapshot in time of here's all the ports open in my organizational IP space, here's what um, certs have been generated, you know, kind of a report versus differential where I, I bring in a baseline level of data and then only changes to that baseline is what I ingest. From a defender perspective, what do you think would be easier to work with, snapshot or differential? I mean, they both have uses, but from an ongoing monitoring perspective, what do you think would be easier to work with? I heard it all over here. I'm just gonna throw it right in front of me. Did you say, okay, all right, I got it. Man, so close. All right, differential. So differential, so there's a problem with differential though. You have to track state, right? You can't just simply say, just go out to show it in and give me all the current results. I have to track state. So I have to see, okay, well, these results came in a month ago. These results came in six months ago, right? And so that's part of the challenge. You have to track state. And I did go ahead and because I feel like differential is so important for long-term monitoring, I went and rewrote these or wrote these scripts with the mindset of we're saving state in a SQLite database for all of this. So we're not just doing a simple NMAP scan. We're now doing NMAP scan on a regular basis, saving the state in a SQLi database, and then if there's been a change, we go ahead and ingest that into Security Onion. We can visualize that data. Again, making sense? All right, so I would like all of you, once again, to send a prayer to the demo gods, because the rest of this is gonna be a demo, and you never know what's gonna happen during live demos. Any questions, comments, or snide remarks before we move to the demo? Okay, let's do this.
All right, first off, I do have Security Onion running on my local VM. I am logged in. Let me make sure I am where I think I am. Okay. So first off, um, I have a Docker container running on uh, Security Onion, and it's got a bunch of these resources. I have four different scripts. I'm going to run each script. I'm going to show you what the data outputs and what it looks like inside of Security Onion. The first one is the, um, let's do the certificate transparency first, but let's look at, come on, no one told me that you can't see it? When were you gonna stop me? Let's try this again. Looking like I could be done with my entire demo and everybody's like, oh, that was a great demo. I didn't see anything, but it sure sounded good. All right, does that look better? Everybody can see that. Okay. All right, so um, I got four different scripts we're gonna run, but first let's look at the config.yaml. All right, this is the config for each of these scripts I'm gonna run. Uh, to be clear, all of this is open source data. I'm not doing any active scanning except for one system that I own. Okay, everything else is open source data here, not doing any hacking. All right, well, quote, hacking. So let's go ahead and run. Got to figure out how to get out of VI first. Okay. Let's run the uh, cert transparency. It's going to pull the config from uh, config.yaml. You can see it made that request for sans.org for our friends over at the SANS Institute. And we get our results. We do see we have six new logs. So I've come over here to Security Onion, come over to Hunt. I've already got a pre-built query. Let me do the last hour. Scroll down and make that a little bigger for y'all. You all see that okay? Somewhat? So we have, um, I, I have a single query built for all the different types. We could build a dashboard or a, you know, a hunt query for each type. Right now I just have one, uh, one here so I can kind of get an overview of it. So you'll see missing data until we get all the different data types in here. So right now I have 12 new findings uh, for certificate transparency. And if I scroll down, these are the certs that have been generated. Network.domain, and if I keep scrolling down, I do see um, six that have been, um, I think that data is off because I think I did this earlier. Let's try the last 15 minutes. Should look a little bit better. So I have three that have been revoked and three that have not been revoked. And I see all the different subdomains, or excuse me, uh, subdomains as well as other associated domains with this, okay? And I can see lots of other data associated with it. Keep scrolling down. Then I can actually dig into the logs down here. So that is the cert transparency. Second is the cloud enumeration. And again, uh, let's look at our config. So I have two different target keywords, defensive depth and defensive dash depth. Now, this one is going to be a bit, yeah, I got this. I know how to computer. I should just cat this file. <laughs> All right, so this one's gonna be a little bit more, um, normally it's gonna take a bit longer to run. I'm gonna make it run a little quicker right now. Cloud enumeration. All right, so we're using Cloud Hunter and it is going through, and right now I only have it set to check one name permutation, all right? Because it's gonna go a lot quicker that way, but it has a list of thousands of other permutations that it could run. For instance, very common one is defensive depth or keyword dash logs or keyword, you know, dash prod, prod one or whatever. And so it's gonna normally run through that list. I just have it set this way so it'll be quick for this demo, okay? But right now I got one hit. So I have a bucket over on AWS that is open, and I have one on AWS that is closed. And again, all that data then gets um, checked to see if it's a new finding. If it's a new finding, 
Uh, it gets written to the database and then JSONified and put sent over to ingest for Security Onion. And if we do another hunt, we should see two new logs and we get two new findings. We can see object state. So this is kind of a generic uh, field because the nmap uses this as well. So if you have a port open, it's gonna be object state of open. And if we scroll down, we'll see, again, some more data that's been populated like AWS. You'll see, again, as this data comes in, the idea is that you're gonna be monitoring this on a regular basis, and once this initial uh, run goes through, then the only results you should be seeing is updates. So for instance, I have no new buckets, okay? No new buckets, everything's good. Then all of a sudden, one day, I get a new bucket, and it's got, you know, it's public access. And I should see that very clearly in something like this, or I could write a detection using playbook to generate an alert on that as well. Any questions so far? Cool, okay. Third, let's do, I'm gonna cap the file this time. Third, let's do the uh, showdown monitoring, okay? Again, I'm gonna use a target keyword of sans.org, a good friend at Sands Institute. And let's do, uh, this one's a little more complex because of the way um, this is built. Uh, I'm using the Shodan CLI app, um, but there, again, it doesn't track state or anything like this, and so I've got a way to do an initial set and then an update. I'm just gonna run an update for time it's gonna go out and run this particular search query. There's a total number of results. It uh, can pull down 316. And then you can see how many query credits I've left. I think I paid five bucks for this API key many, many years ago during a Black Friday sale. So um, showed a very useful tool, very cheap to use, very, very useful. And it's gonna go through and check it against the database, see if it's a new finding, if it is, it writes out the JSON and ingest it, and we should see those results as well. You can see it starts to populate here. So we have uh, 12, you know, 443 of AWS ELB, Apache. I think we might have some more interesting things eventually show up. Found 18, okay. We'll give that a second here. Scroll down, there we go. So again, Shodan gives us lots of, um, lots of different views of the data that it finds, all right? And so if there is an HTTP type uh, application running on that port, it will go ahead and grab everything that it can, and we can very easily ingest that and make that viewable. So I can see the HTTP host, the status, server, the title, as well as um, some of the HTML on the page as well. Again interesting things that we can find through Shodan. All right, third, excuse me, fourth and final is going to be our perimeter monitoring. All right, and this one, this one I have running against a DigitalOcean um, VM that I have, uh, that I stood up a couple days ago. So let's start out with that one. So it's running nmap in the background. It's uh, running against that IP address. It's then um, converting that XML to JSON, then checking against the database to see if this is a new finding. If it's a new finding, it goes ahead and saves it and ingest it into SO. And we do have a new finding. So we bring that over, refresh. We should have new data coming in. And all of this, uh, with the parsing, I went ahead and parsed, or someone mentioned, you know, all the logs are in different formats, right? And so part of this process was um, renaming some of the fields according to Elastic Common Schema so that I could show all of this in one uh, hunt query rather than having a bunch of random different fields that we had to look at. And then if I change, um, let's come over to, I should have the DigitalOcean. If I pull off that firewall, it should find more ports. All 
All right, rerun that, and we should get a change. All right, it did find right here. Formatting's a little off, but the idea is it found these were existing, and then it found one new one, 9200. All right, and that's gonna ingest as a new change. It will not ingest the uh, port 80 and 443. So you're only gonna get relevant logs to have to regularly view. And we should see that port 9200 right here. Then again, you could filter on that. And we can see that that came from, so object state of open, so it's port open. Eventually, um, I haven't implemented it yet, but I do wanna have a little, because it's all saved in the database, I wanna have a little blurb that says, you know, this was the, the specific change. You know, it changed from this port from closed open or whatever it is. I think that would be pretty useful as well. And then we can actually drill down into the specific log itself. And if this is a problem, we can escalate this into a case. We can come over here and work that case of someone left uh, Elasticsearch publicly available on the internet, not a good deal, all right? Something to go work through. All right, any questions or comments? Is that, again, making sense? Okay. That is primarily it for the demo. I think, you know, putting this, moving this uh, into production and using this on a more regular basis, I would probably set, you know, the, these four different scripts to run. Um, probably some of them I'd run multiple times a day, others I would run only once a day. And then uh, I would also write some detections that would say, hey, you know, if um, I see these IPs, maybe for my organizational IP space, and if I see any open ports, let's go ahead and generate an alert on that. Um, for other things, I may go ahead and just leave it as is. I see a question all the way up there, yes. That's a great question. So the question was, are you expecting to run this on the manager or could you put this like uh, on an agent someplace, someplace else on a different system? First and foremost, this is proof of concept. This should not be run in production. I should have started with that. Do not run this in production, okay? Totally proof of concept. Secondly, um, I would deploy this like at, on a AWS node or something like that because this is gonna be doing, especially if you're doing active scanning, um, and if you're trying to get an outside perspective uh, for your organizational IP space, that's gonna be difficult if it's internal, right? And so I would try to deploy something like this on AWS. Um, you're also going to be able to, depending on what kinds of, um, what kinds of scanning you're doing, you might be using a lot of connections and you might get blocked, right? And so using an elastic IP, AWS elastic IP, to swap those out as needed could be useful as well. So that would be my personal preference is I would look to deploy something like this more long-term in something like AWS on, a, on another node. So let me flip back to my slides. So this is available out on uh, GitHub, uh, github.com slash defensive depth slash defensive dash, dash intel. It is proof of concept. All of those disclaimers apply. Um, please do not put this in production. Play around with it. Um, it does have instructions. There is a, you can just git clone it and then run the shell script that I have there. It will go ahead and um, build a Docker container as well as put in the ingest pipelines and some of the other stuff that it needs which means it's modifying SO, which again, for the fourth time, means do not put this on production because it will screw up your system, okay? Um, any, any questions? That's pretty much the end. I have no idea how long it went or what time it is. Do we have a couple of minutes for questions if we're good? Okay, yes. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, so the question is, how would you schedule this in production? Um, so I took the Shodan um, uh, script from last SOC and scheduled that to run via cron job every night. And so that's what I would typically do with something like this. Um, is uh, for Shodan, I would do I would do daily. 
for perimeter scanning, I'd probably do you know, every couple hours, you know, just depending on exactly what we're talking about. Because again, because it's diffs, it doesn't really matter you know, if you're scheduling it more often because you're not gonna get extraneous data ingested. Um, unless you're, unless like the cloud enumeration is gonna use a lot of uh, outbound connections. So that's something that you maybe wanna do maybe once, you know, once a day type thing. Good question. Any other questions or comments? My overarching goal is, I feel like this is visibility that we need and there are tools out there that can do this, but they're kind of all scattered and uh, what I would like to see is something that I can quickly and easily set up and just say, do it and then show me differentials when it happens and then I just don't have to worry about it, right? That's kind of my, my overarching thought here. Okay, uh, the other thing I'll mention is I've got a talk at B-Sides Gusto tomorrow. I'm gonna be talking about in uh, Security Engine 2.4, we moved to Elastic Agent. Elastic Agent has process auditing, so you deploy that to Windows. It uh, looks at all of the processes and ingests those logs. Um, I'm gonna be talking about how to convert Florian Ross Sysmon configuration into process filters that can then be imported into Elastic Fleet and Agent so it can filter out known good data you know, from the process auditing side of things. So feel free to come to that talk tomorrow and make fun of me. I probably won't have onions to throw at you. Maybe I'll throw something else though. Other than that, thank you all very much. Much appreciated.